Welcome back to the sweatshop. In today's video, we're going to be working on this 2006 Volkswagen Jetta TDI. What we're doing on the Jetta today is we are replacing our belt as well as our tensioner assembly. This one here, currently on the car, has a hole. And this guy here, well, it's missing probably three, yeah, I think three or two of the bands that make up the belt. Yeah, it's in pretty rough shape. Of course, we're also going to inspect why it is it ended up like that. Most times it's because of our tensioner walking and causing the belt to walk off the pulley. Sometimes it can be because of a damaged pulley or a bad alternator pulley because this thing is a one-way clutch type alternator pulley. So that is something to keep in mind and something we will try our best to show you. Of course, these videos are kind of hard to film just because there isn't much room and there's not much to show you with all the stuff around the pulley and whatnot it's just not a lot of room of course we'll try to inspect the crank pulley and give you as much valuable information as possible this is definitely a job that you can do by yourself in the driveway provided you are not crazy enough to get underneath the car without a jack and of course watch the full length of video now let me say that clearly so that you don't do something stupid if you are going to work on your vehicle and get underneath it employ the use of a jack stand what we've got today is I can't remember the name brand of that stuff but it is definitely an OE manufacturer it's made in Romania and this guy here is a Japanese manufacturer but this particular belt is made in the US of A of course go ahead and get yourself some quality stuff if you have a TDI these things tend to chew through belts if you get cheap stuff just because there is a lot of torque that can be generated quite quickly on this thing and the alternator and compressor can sometimes be a lot to handle for the belt so get some quality stuff is all I'm saying and of course, before we get started with today's video, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. Now, let's open up the hood, take a peek, and I'll show you what's going on. All right, what we are staring at is our alternator. As you can see, it doesn't have full coverage by the belt. That's because some of the belt is missing. We are what looks to be missing two to three bands of the belt. What may have caused this, you might ask? Well, you may, may be able to see it on camera, but the tensioner there is kind of cocked like a show. It's off center. That is probably what's driving that belt to chew itself up. A good sign of why that may be happening is, well, you can see some of the aluminum there is missing. Now, I don't know whether that damage is from a idiot mechanic, and specifically what I'm talking about is that there. I don't know whether that's from a mechanic or physical damage just because of wear and tear or something hitting it. I don't know. Nonetheless, we are going to be replacing that as well as our belt. But before we throw all that stuff on, of course, two things. We need to get it all off and we need to verify that there are no other issues with our pulleys by spinning them. In order to do that, we will need to take off the tray, uh, the bottom engine tray that is, that keeps all that wonderful TDI noise down and we need to take off the side tray. You don't necessarily need to remove them completely for the bottom tray or the side tray but I'm going to remove the side tray completely and we'll leave the bottom tray kind of hanging because well I don't want to take the whole goddamn thing off for that you don't need to technically take off the tire I'm going to be taking it off just because it's going to be in my way to film and show you guys what the hell is going on and also I want to inspect that crank pulley to make sure it hasn't gone to shit that being said Let's put this thing up in the air. We'll pull the wheel off. I will in my case. You, like I say, don't need to, but you at least need to leave the thing in neutral or in the AC position on the ignition so you can move the wheel freely from right to left. Now, I was thinking to show you guys how to take this piece of plastic off, which sits in this area here, but it's rather pointless because there's like 600 goddamn bolts. In the back here, there is a slot in the back that is towards your suspension. Then you have one screw here, you have one screw here, you have one screw there, you have two screws over here. That will get this area dealt with. Now, in this area here, you got four or five screws. You got one, a two, a three, a four, a five, and a six. So that's one more than what I said, but whatever, you get the point. There's a shit ton of them. Go ahead, pull those stupid things out, and then slip this pile of crap out of the way. Now we can go ahead and I can show you what is going on. What we are looking at, of course, this is our crank pulley. That's our tensioner pulley. 
which I think, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure that is field. And this guy here, our wonderful compressor, which gives us cold air in the uh, summertime, which is invaluable if you're up north because, man, our humidity. And I'm not, I'm not saying, not all, you know, all you folks from tropical countries there, don't be like, oh my god, we get like 40 degree weather. Yeah, it's uh, whatever. 30 degrees in Ontario is still pretty damn hot. It's not as hot as 40, but whatever. I need my AC. Anyhow, I don't know where that rant came from, but that's it has nothing to do with this video. What you're looking at here is a six and then a PK. That there indicates how many ribs are on this belt. This one here is not six. It's currently four, maybe four and a half. You can see there a little sliver left. What causes this? Well, usually a pulley that is walking or damaged to one of these surfaces. Either the tensioner pulley, uh, which highly unlikely that it's damaged from the back, but it looks like it is causing the belt to walk. Of course, we will have to inspect the grooves on all of these pulleys to make sure that there's no crud, damage, or buildup that would cause our belt to sever. There is a lock on this tensioner. Great, wonderful, not something you can really access easily. So my thing is, is just put the tensioner in and, or take the lock out, uh, depending. I can't remember if it was accessible from the top. I think it is easy to access on the top of this one. Uh, but a lot of times it's just easier to grab the wrench and not use the lock. Um, that's my opinion though. This of course depends on the car. What you need for this particular tensioner is a 16 mil. Any 16 mil wrench will do the trick. You of course need to go that way. So let's let's switch that up on camera. And now pull this guy down. And slip this belt off. Let's adjust that so I can get this belt back on. Or I can get my wrench off. There we go. Damn it, let go of my wrench, bitch. Still, like, how much more do you want, bud? Okay. Oh, there we go, that works too. Let's pull this guy off. Now I'll show you the difference because it may be confusing, but uh, that there is what six rolls look like, and that there is what four rolls look like. This, my friends, is a pile of garbage. Now, in order to inspect these pulleys properly you will need to spin the engine and whatnot if your belt is chewed up like mine is it is highly suggested that you do yourself a favor and make sure you don't have any damage to the pulleys of course you do this by spinning each individually to make sure that you don't have any damage crud buildup or any sort of situation that may damage your belt of course with your crank pulley you gotta get in there, make sure you look at all the grooves and get a 12 point, I think it's 12.19 mil. I'm not sure exactly which, what size it is. You know what? If you're in the situation, I should be telling you because you're gonna be like, well, why didn't he tell us? Especially because a lot of people, well, a lot of people don't have these goddamn sockets and you don't wanna be buying the wrong one. Yeah, 19 mil 12 point is what you need. Okay, I'm gonna go do all that stuff off camera and then I'm gonna show you how to inspect your alternator because that's a different ball game altogether. I can show you on the bench as well, so I'll do that just so it's clear. With the alternator pulley, this is what you call a slip type or one way or clutch type. Essentially, all it does is it rotates in one direction. So as soon as you let off the accelerator, the armature inside or the rotor inside of the alternator is free to slowly come down instead of being jerked down with the speed of the engine. Now, how you test this is you wanna rotate this guy to see if it will slip. If it doesn't slip, that pulley is bad. You jerk it essentially, or twist it like that really quickly. Essentially, you'll stop the pulley with your hand and the alternator will continue to spin just a bit. Now, with the tensioner here, we have this bolt there and that one right down there that needs to be taken out. They are 13 millimeter bolts. I'm get my pointer stick. So, as I was saying, it's, the, it's that guy there and that guy there, 13 mil bolts that need to be pulled off in order to get this thing out of the car. Now, when I pull those bolts out, I will be taking them out from the other side. Now, in order to do this, I am going to need to use the lock 
because, well, you can't access the goddamn bolt unless you use the lock. Uh, the lock is simply just a one eighth piece of steel uh, rod that you're going to shove in there. You can slide it in from either the front or rear, doesn't really matter. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so this is basically all you need. It's just a small either dowel or punch that is busted. You're gonna slide it in to the back of this thing here and you'll see it protrude just a bit, all right? Now, what you gotta do is get that guy all the way over. So get that 16 mil wrench, twist it over and then slide that dowel through the little tab that's on the front here. Well, you can't really see it much. Well, you can on camera, but I can't see it. You're gonna slide it through this guy here. Now, I can't see what the hell I'm doing, but I'm gonna slide it through. You gotta slide it through like that, and now the tensioner is locked in place, and we can access the 13 mil comfortably from either the top or bottom. Okay, let's grab our 13 mil. Uh, well, this is a horrible angle. Oh, damn it. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna reposition the camera so this clip's useless. All right, grab your 13 mil and ratchet. You can use a ratchet wrench if you can fit one in there comfortably. The holes is there and well, I don't like to disturb stuff so I just get my shallow ratchet or my shallow socket and ratchet and just give her. These guys aren't held in by much torque so as long as you get it all the way on, you're fine. Okay, I should be able to twist it out by hand. Yeah, no, that was wishful thinking. Let's get a small ratchet wrench. Flex heading for extra flex. Damn it! Now, we're gonna do the bottom bolt and then we'll pull the tensioner assembly out from the bottom just because there's more room. Uh, I've never tried to take it out from the top. I imagine you could if you move some stuff, but like I say, I'm not interested in touching stuff unless I have to. All right, now you can see our bottom bolt there. Let's go in with our 13 mil and crank that guy loose. God damn it. This is so much easier when I'm not filming. It's actually a really fairly quick job and something that doesn't take much. <sighs> Stop it. Give me the bolt. Give me the bolt. God damn it. Well, this guy's just not cooperating here, bud. Oh, don't hit the camera if you're filming. Ah, there we go. Okay, and that there is uh, one tensioner. Now let's go over to the bench and I'll explain the alternator as well as the tensioner. All right, at the bench here, we have our wonderful model Nissan alternator. What I'm going to do now is rotate this really fast in this way, and then you will see this portion of the alternator, the rotor housing, Rotor housing, that's the rotor housing, Jimmy, idiot. You will see the alternator inside, or the guts of the alternator continue to spin. Now you may also be able to hear that sort of sound. That is the pulley itself doing its job and allowing the guts of the alternator to continue spinning even though this guy has come to a rapid stop. This is something that is integral to the operation of your pulley system. Now, unless you drive like a grandma, you will end up putting extra stress and load on the belt as well as the tensioner and that can chew up your belt as well as tensioner. So it is in your best interest if your pulley is seized to go ahead and replace it. They do sell the pulley separate. I'm not sure how much they cost and whatnot and what a reputable brand is, but I usually just get them from my European auto parts supplier who usually sells OE or, you know, OE quality stuff that's actually going to last. 
Of course, do your own due diligence, make sure you get the right part for your car. That being said, it is integral that you make sure you have the correct engine code that you're working on. You will know from some of my other videos, one of the reasons I hate European cars is there are like just a ridiculous amount of transmissions and engines, which is just stupid. You know, slight variations is fine, but when you're talking completely different parts, man, oh man, what a pain in the ass. Gen Generally, where you're going to find the engine code is, well, three places that I usually find them most commonly is either the timing cover, the back of the head or somewhere on the head, and then, of course, taking your VIN number and calling your dealership. It is friggin' nightmare sometimes to find out the information. Now, I have not verified by visually looking at the engine, but based on the parts and the way that they looked, which I was right about because I ordered this based on that code, the code for this particular engine is a BRM. I don't know why they have so many codes. It's super annoying because man, they all do the same crap and yeah. Anyhow, let's let's not get on to a rant about that because I'm sure you don't want to hear me ramble on about that for the next 20 or 30 minutes. Anyhow, you can see here is our wonderful tensioner. Let's take this pile of shit Nissan part and get the hell out of the way. This here is quote unquote, an aftermarket tensioner. It is exactly the same as the OEM brand. It is just made in Romania for cheaper than Germany, I assume, but you can see there is the same brand name. Yeah, with the tensioner, it should obviously not have any holes in it like that because, well, that's not cool. I don't know, like I say, why that is, it's damaged. Um, as you can see, we don't have a hole in this one, so yeah. I can only assume that this joint here may be slightly worn out because, well, this thing's rocking back and forth pretty good when we start it up. Of course, what else will contribute to that is a bad pulley. And this one seems to be sticking a bit in certain positions. As you can see, it's rotating pretty good there, but when your belt is putting tension on it, because you can see some of the crap or rubber from the belt, because this guy's getting pretty hot, you can see how it stops relatively quick with the same amount of pressure. So just imagine it shifting on its axis and continuously rubbing. This can also cause that sort of issue uh, that a pulley like the alternator when it's not working properly will cause. This, boys and girls, I've said that twice today now and the comments are gonna let me know because they, they hate that shit. It's so annoying, stop saying, I'm sorry, god damn. This here is a garbage. All you need to do is, of course, get your little punch out of there. Um, it is, yes, a punch and a specialty tool for me because it takes care of many, many different things. So I'll put this in the vise later. Of course, just twist that guy the opposite way and pull the punch out. Do not pull this lock or this pin that locks your tensioner out until you install the tensioner because you will not be able to access this bolt easily at all. Of course, before you put it in, spin this guy to make sure it's all good and quiet. Make sure there is no crap on the pulley and make sure it is nice and straight and it is a good part that you have purchased because if it isn't, you should return it and get a good part. Well, let's go ahead and install this thing. All right, now has come the fun time Time for us to put our new tensioner back into the car. Slide it in as gently as possible. How the hell did this thing come out? Son of a bit. Twist, twist. Do the twist, bitch. Okay, I don't know. I remember taking this thing out a lot easier than how I am shoving it in. There we go. There we go. Now, now you will take your bolting and put it through the hole and thread it into place. I can't see shit. This is actually much easier without a camera in the way. Now, do not tighten it up. You're just going to leave it snug so that you can thread in the top bolt. All right, now let us lower the car and do the top bolt. That is German for bolt, I think, in my head. Let me know how they actually say it, I don't know. Grab your top bolt and thread it into place. Make sure you line up the hole. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're getting there. 
slowly but surely and now you can go ahead and tighten up your top bolt this one is basically snug enough go ahead grab your torque wrench set it to 15 foot pounds or 20 newton meters I'm trying to do this shot without fucking up the camera angle but all right now before you take that pin out you need to jack this thing back up torque that bottom bolt and then we can pull the pin out and do the bottom bolt yay all right now do yourself a favor grab a little magnet like this and that'll help coax this guy out without uh, getting your fingers jabbed because when you sometimes are trying to get this tensioner off if for whatever reason it slips and your fingers are anywhere in this region trying to get that little pin out and well they get whacked by the spring it's going to suck really suck bad yeah, so yeah don't 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 screw your hands up because well no car's worth that shit all right now uh, get your 16 mil on the tensioner and or whatever size is required for your aftermarket part and uh, crank it Oh, damn it. We're just trying to walk it out. Yeah, see we're making some progress there Well, this spring I'll tell you is a lot more tensiony or tensioner your I don't know what the word is I'm looking for but it's tighter. Oh I didn't get it all the way damn it But I got it enough to where the tensioner came out. So that's good. All right Just a little bit more all right, then pull that guy out there. Don't throw it out because, well, it's just another little punch or specialty tool. All right, now let's go ahead now and uh, we will throw the belt on. Now, two things. This guy here obviously hooks around our compressor, crank pulley, and alternator, and then the back half rides on our tensioner. I like putting the belt on in a fashion where I can read the information on it. Now, it's not absolutely necessary, but some belts do have an arrow which indicates a direction in which they should run. Make sure you verify that your belt does or does not have arrows, and then, of course, put it on appropriately. Let's hook this guy around the alternator. Oh my god, oh my god. Yes, yes, it does help you, to be honest, if you speak in whatever language or accent it is that you think the person who made the car may have spoken in. It's just wonderful. All right. You may ask yourself why. I don't know why. It's just, it's in my head like that. You know what I mean? Okay. Now, let us get this guy here on and, oh, that's not going to work. Yeah, that'll work like that. All right. Yeah. Loop that guy on. Loop that guy on. And now get the compressor. And now verify it's on the alternator by feeling with your fingertips. And then let it loose. And then verify that everything is where it should be. Yes. Yes, it is looking very good. Now, what we need to do is, of course, inspect it visually from on top. We'll fire it up to make sure the belt doesn't fly off and take a visual look at all the pulleys to make sure they're not all wonky and they're all nice and straight. Now, I'm pretty confident in my work, so I'm going to go shove this panel back on and the wheel and all that stuff. If you're looking for a torque spec specifically for those fasteners, don't screw them up. Simple. It is a small fastener, and if you twist on it like a gorilla, it will break. Don't fuck it up. All right, our next step, go ahead, fire this thing up and make sure that our tensioner isn't fluttering around all over the place and that it is relatively still and not uh, jumping around like the old uh, tensioner was. Not bad. That looks like a fix, eh? Shut up, throttle body. Go to sleep. There we go. Now, you can see this thing was fluttering around just a little bit. It was 10 times worse before, so the tensioner for sure has made a difference. But we do have a alternator pulley that is not acting as it should, so we are going to be replacing that at a later date, and that should take care of those little undulations. But we also have an engine that is not running as smoothly as it should. Of course, this thing's got about 400,000 kilometers, and the customer's not looking to dump all kinds of money into it. 
it so we're going to do what is needed as needed and nothing that is you know we're not we're we're not trying to make this thing run like it's brand new that being said that is essentially what you want a little bit of flutter is fine that's just the way she goes when we change that alternator pulley i think it's going to make a difference that being said we are all done of course if your belt was chewed up keep an eye on it from time to time to make sure that there is nothing going wrong with your new belt and that way you will ensure many many trouble free miles to come all right yeah let's do my ending oh wait before we end this video if you took off the wheel make sure you torque it uh, set your torque wrench there to 89 foot pounds or 120 newton meters we are good to go thumbs up yeah well, that's all she wrote for this one. All you got to do now is take this thing for a test drive. Make sure you monitored the belt to make sure there are no issues if you had the same issue that I did. And of course, keep an eye on your tensioner. With that being said, hopefully you found the video entertaining as well as informative. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. And as always, thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one. What we're doing on the Jetta is we are replacing our serpentine belt and our tensioner with the pulley. Anybody can see that the pulley is on there, Jimmy. I don't know why I have to say that the pulley is there. It's obvious. The black thing is the pulley. Stupid. Fuck. Just dropped my fucking pen. Like, that thing's expensive too. Suck Sam likes a lot of money for these stupid things. Anyhow. Next thing is... Uh, what is the next thing? Oh, yes. Fuck off, plane. I'm filming in here. People trying to go places on their fucking plane. Come on, damn it. What we are staring at is our alternator. As you can see, it doesn't look to be fully encompassed. Encompassed? That's not... Yeah, I guess that would work. Oh, I should align the camera first before I start hitting record, Jimmy. Oh, smart guy. Come on, settle down. All right, what we are looking at... All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> I don't know, man. It's fucking late. I want to go the fuck home. I was supposed to be home at 2 o'clock today. It's 9. Or what time is it now? Like 7? Mother sucker. Mother sucker, YouTube. I didn't say the, um, uh, you know, don't demonetize my shit, mother. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now, I don't know. I'm just, I'm rambling on like crazy. Anyhow. Shut up, Kerr. Okay, where the fuck did I put my wrench? That being said, shut up, Hoist. I'm filming. I had written it down and I don't remember where the fuck I put it, but fuck! I'm, I'll be back. I'm gonna go look for that shit. I'm gonna clash. It is exactly the OM. Do not pull this thing out of the car before. Do not pull the Do not pull this thing out. Out. Yeah, out would have made sense, but I, uh, whatever. Do not pull this lock out of your brand new tensioner until you have installed it because hoist come on i almost got through it oh yeah take off the camera now obviously this is a very simple belt system basically these guys hook around the compressor these guys it's one belt jimmy I don't know about you, but I like to read exactly what it is I'm looking at. So I like putting in, putting in. So make sure you verify that your belt, make sure that you verify, make sure. I know, fuck. You know, uh, yes. All right, let's go ahead, start that thing up and make sure that tensioner isn't juddering around all over the place like a crazy thing on steroids or crack or well, I'm not going to mention that shit. Uh, let's make sure. <laughs> so stupid. Fia, good to go. Thumbs up, yeah. Just get the thumb in the fucking frame there, Jim. That's all she wrote for this one. Anything, any blah, 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 anything. What the fuck am I talking about? Okay, hoist, right on cue. Well, that's all she wrote for this one. All that's left to do is to take this thing for a test. Blah, test. Blah. With all that out of the way, make sure. I don't know what the fuck I was going to say there. Blah, 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 blah. Um, yes, yes, yes.